I'm Sophie Hanna. Hi, I'm Anissa. Hi, I'm Mona. And I'm Fairy Queen Tatiana. And welcome to episode 57 of Ethnically Speaking, the show where we discuss everything affecting the UK's highly melanated communities, from current affairs to pop culture and everything in between. We always keep it 100, and today we're talking all about going under the knife. Cosmetic surgery has always been big business, but quarantine has led to a surprising boom in the industry. With people all over the world stuck at home, people wanted to have a quick nip here, quick nip there, and found themselves asking the question, if not now, when? Have you or would you ever get cosmetic surgery? Is now the perfect time to get it? And would you be open about it or is it still a taboo surrounding the topic and practice of going under the knife for vanity? I 100% think that there is still a taboo. I think that right now there is this weird division of people who are like champions of surgery. And I mean to the extreme, but then there's also this taboo. So you have people like, I'm going to name and shame, Kim Kardashian. Oh, my bum is real. <laughs> okay, cool. And my Brazilian 16 inch weave is real as well. You have people who tell the truth and they own it which also breeds this weird sort of championship because I'm not too sure if you guys are familiar with some of YouTubers like Nella Rose, for example, she's actually yeah. been approached by some companies to do a BBL and then encourage other young girls to go to these clinics in Turkey and also get a BBL. That is so damaging. There's a difference between being open about your surgery and actually trying to influence people to go and do the same surgery. Um, there's so many bits that I need to like unpack. Would I get surgery? Hell yeah. I've got a whole long list of what I would do because I believe you've got one life and if you want to be happy, do what makes you happy. I'm not saying that I'm going to be a botched Barbie up here, but if I had a itty bitty <laughs> waist and you know, shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, I'd be smiling. I'd be happy. I'd love that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel that it's something I would force feed down someone else's throat and I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't parade it, but I wouldn't lie. If I was asked about it, I would tell the truth, but I wouldn't parade it. And I think it's actually quite sad that during this whole pandemic that we're in, people find that now is where they want to be getting more surgery. I find that actually very worrying because it's like, is it because you have more time to yourself? Is it because you're in the mirror a lot? What is it that makes you feel that you need to get this snip and tuck? Because no one's open. You're not out and about. You're not having pressure from people. I think it comes a lot from social media, the consistent scrolling and seeing people who look perfect. And we're now in a generation where we see the things that celebrities are getting done and we can get it done too. If I wanted to email Kim Kardashian's doctor, I could. I mean, I'd, it'd be difficult because there's a long waiting list, but I can go straight to the man. We no longer have to worry about hmm, Jay looks a bit different from 1998 to 2000. Something happened. I can find out what happened and I can find out who did it and I could do it myself if I wanted to. So obviously there's going to be an increase in people wanting to get things done because they have the ability to do so. <sighs> Sophie, do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you know I always got a lot to say. I think for me, so no, I haven't had any plastic surgery done. Am I against it? I would like, if I had children, I might get the girls lifted because that breastfeeding <laughs> will take it out of the, out, <laughs> out of the titty, mm. man. That's, let me just say it. it take it out. Yeah. I would just say it. It takes it out of them. But um, I think in terms of uh, plastic surgery, though, I definitely think it is taboo. And I think I don't even know if women, because I think predominantly it's a lot of women who go to get plastic surgery mm -hmm. because we are told that we're not enough the way that we are or yeah. we see massively digitalized pictures on social media or advertising campaigns or wherever. And then we have this idea of like, we want to look a certain way. And I think my issue with plastic surgery can be that it might not be solving the issue that's going on inside. Like some yeah. people say they get plastic surgery and then, you know, they feel great. But a lot of times the doctors would be like, this isn't going to fix any innate hate that you have inside of yourself. Like if there's something you don't like, if you don't feel good about yourself, surgery is not going to change that. And I think that sometimes the way that we're, yeah, the way that, not plastic surgery, I say this idea of perfectionism and what mm. beauty looks like. And we have to be very clear that we're told what beauty looks like in our generation. So at the moment, mm. it's exaggerated proportions. Um, yeah. I think the, the Coca-Cola mm -hmm. bottle has been in for a long time, but now with the, with Kim Kardashian, whether she's had it or not, 
I got my own opinion on that. I'll keep it quiet. But the whole point is she has an exaggerated Coca-Cola mm-hmm. shaped bottle. And mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing now. And that's why you're seeing waist trainers. And that's why you're seeing corsets. And that's why you're seeing flat tummy All these things to give you exaggerated proportions. Yeah. But we don't know if that's going to be different in 10, 15 years. Beauty changes all the time, like fashion. And people are having themselves cosmetically enhanced in order to fit a certain aesthetic. But they might be something that they regret in the future. And once you have that BBL, like, you, there's no going back. You can't take the fat back out, which I think is really scary. But have I ever thought about changing my body in an instant and having exactly what I want where I want it? A hundred percent. A hundred percent I have, for sure. But then I have to think as well, is that me not being happy with myself and something that I need to work on in terms of my self-esteem rather than look into a surgery to fix something and if it goes wrong, what then? Yeah, you see, I'm glad that this show is such a safe space, okay? Uh, love the you, girl. I, the reason why I say it's a safe space, and I think in the previous episode we talked about freedom of speech, I used to exercise my beloved freedom of speech to have very strong opinions about this whole plastic surgery topic. And through having those conversations, I unlearned a lot, grew a lot. I still have the same stance, but I have more understanding. So I'll clear up first that I've not had any surgery and that I will not have any surgery. I'm just not for it. Like there was just, I, for me, I cannot be convinced of it. Now, if for example, you know, God forbid, I was in a car accident and then my face ripped off on it was on the other side of the tree and they got to put it back on and reconstruct it, you know, that that's its own thing. But I wouldn't <laughs> opt for any kind of enhancement and surgery. And I try not to encourage others to do it. And the reason why I said I had to unlearn, unlearn my strong opinion, because I used to be incredibly strong about this, but I had to kind of unlearn it because there have been a lot of women around me, so family and friends who have got cosmetic surgery. And I had incredibly strong opinions about their decisions to go and do this. And do you know what I realized? It was not constructive to do that. And I just kind of wheeled myself back. But it was, I basically took an extreme stance because I was trying to be, to be extreme against it in regards to what, basically what I mean Mm. is, you know, when I was younger, you know, I grew up around a lot of women because, you know, I had a lot of sisters, you know, I got two moms. I grew up around a lot of women and all the women I grew up with were not happy with the way that they looked so they would constantly criticize themselves talk about this boob job they want to get this nose job this butt job this everything was about what kind of plastic surgery they would get and and you know they were obsessed with like jordan and kate price so then when i was young i was obsessed with jordan i remember going to school primary school and i was nine years old and telling everyone i'm gonna get these big fake tits like jordan when i turned 16 like that was how it changed because all the women around me, it was slim fast, it was diet, it was, we're gonna get this surgery, we're gonna do this. It was like a literal obsession. And when I kind of, and you know when you're younger, you just think, oh, okay, this is it. So I'm, I remember telling my friends, I'm gonna get a boob job when I'm 16, I'm gonna get a nose job, I'm gonna get all these things because I thought that's what you just do as a woman. You go and you get all this surgery and all that kind of stuff. And when I grew my teen, I was thinking, what the hell? Like, that is crazy. Like, in my mind, it was so crazy. I was like, why aren't people just happy with themselves? And I think in my extremity, I became so happy with myself. I was like, why the hell would I ever get surgery? And why the hell is everybody else getting surgery? So when people used to tell me that they felt a certain way about their body and they wanted to get surgery, I'd be like, no, absolutely not. Do not do that. And then I had to learn. One, it's not my place to tell anybody how they feel about themselves. Yes, I would want them to be empowered and to have higher esteem and to love the body they're in and to take care of that body. However, comma, if they feel like the surgery is a part of them taking care of their body and is a part of them feeling better about themselves, it's not my place to talk them out of it. So that was what I that is what is I had to unlearn. However, I will still say if any of my friends or family come to me about surgery, I still advise them that is not something I would encourage you to do, but if you want to do it. Let me know how I can be of assistance. If you need me to wheel you to the hospital, girl, if you need me to be there afterwards, help to clean the bandages, I'm, I'm going to do that. And I have done that. However, I've, it's always been a conflict of interest because I'm, I'm just so not for it that I can't, mm. I cannot, I cannot sit here and tell you, yes, girl, you better do that. Like, it would just never come out of my mouth. It just wouldn't. Yeah. And Lisa, um, I have to ask quickly, like, yeah, and I hope it's not. I hope I hope you can share, but I hope it's not too personal. If yes, it's yes, too yes. personal, don't answer. But yeah, do you think the women that you know who have got it 
has it made them happy? Because I feel like, yeah, has it made them happy? Have they gotten and never had a, another body image problem ever again? I would say it has made them happy. It's kind of like, you know, when you have a bad breakup and then you meet a new man and, oh my gosh, it's so great. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy, happy, happy. And then the dust settles. And then you're like, you find something else that's wrong or that relationship isn't right. That's what my experience has been. So maybe if they've perhaps got the surgery and it was just one and done and it was like, do you know what? I feel so amazing. I feel better about myself. I feel so much more confident, like everything and it's fine. I would be like, okay, cool. But what I've seen, and I'm not to tell anybody's story from the people that I know, is that they've got one thing done. And then it's let's move on to another, and it's and then it's things that I've never heard of in my life. That is that is mm. that is really and I'm just kind of like, how, how did we get here? You told me that it was just this one specific issue that you had that that has plagued you for the whole of your life, and now we're here to like five issues. I, I like I don't understand how we've got so far down the road. And so for me, I always say to them, it's like it's like a black hole. Like as soon as you fall a little bit, you're just gonna keep falling if you don't correct the actual issue which I think is more of a self-esteem issue versus the surgery and so those are the conversations I've been having with people and so maybe that's why my opinion is so strong because it's so skewed to the personal experiences that I've been having mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, I think one of the oh, things oh that sorry go on Tatiana no um I was just going to say that um, I find surgery or cosmetic surgery very fascinating um, mm -hmm. Any show about surgery, I, I'm I'm one to watch. Um, so I, I absolutely love seeing the psychology, like um, Anissa was just saying about why people do it. I'd like to understand what is going someone through someone's mind. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm -hmm. because I've watched so much, I would never do it because I'm too scared. Like I, I carry mm -hmm. twins and I was too scared to have a C-section. So I was like, we're going to push you out. So I wasn't oh about gosh. to have no surgery. I'm like, no, we're going to use this body. But I think... My relationship with my body, I just want to have a healthy body so I can do mm -hmm. what my, my body can do. And I just don't want yeah. to cause any issues because of surgery. Because I've seen women like Kim Kardashian who have surgery and have babies. It's like your body is expanding, you're getting skinny again, yes. expanding. Mm -hmm, I just don't mm -hmm, want to cause mm -hmm. any issues to have any issues during pregnancy because being pregnant is already a struggle or getting mm. pregnant. So to have anything caused by surgery, I just wouldn't want to do that. So perhaps maybe later on, um, like Sophie just said about, you know, the breasticles. Um, but just I think... I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even want fake ones. I just want them to be Just a lift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think for, yeah. for women, especially if you've done all, all of the things you wanted to do as uh, in terms of becoming a mother, I think have your children first and then think about surgery because you just... You wouldn't want to put your body at risk. But I yeah. do think there's a there, there are two schools of thought. There's some people who have a taboo mm -hmm. and some people who are like for it. And I think it all has to stem down to insecurities. And growing up, I've had my insecurities. But I think delving into them and unpacking them has really made me understand why I feel that way. And I think Beyonce said it best in her song, the soul that needs surgery. So I think we have to really look inside of us and fix the problems before we go and do anything permanently. Can I just say that Beyonce needs to shut up because her hip to waist ratio, <laughs> that wasn't so No, no, to don't come to Beyonce. Do you that. think she, do do think she had it done? Because this, this is the yes, eyeliner. Do you think she had a BBL? She, do you think she did? Yeah, I don't think so. Of course. No, Of Mona. course she has. Of course she has. No, Mona. Of course she has. Let me... Let me come I with the receipts. I don't know, like her, 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 her bum looks Pepsi, very round on the Ivy Park. It does look that perfectly That Pepsi cool. commercial. Guys, she's it, aged like course. 10 years and had three kids. She, yeah, okay. She's, I, I think can see that I'm saying. talking to a beehive, so I'm just going to kick back. <laughs> no, the thing, is, I'm not even, the thing is, I'm not even a part of the beehive. But when people say this about her body, I get really defensive and I don't know why. I'm so sorry. I really don't because I'm not even a Do part of the Do you know what? I, I, I kind of, like I sit that. on, I really don't. <laughs> I sit on the But I don't know why I get defensive. I just, <laughs> the, thing, the thing that I was going to say about um, what Tatiana said, the Beyonce doing that whole your soul needs surgery or whatever, a lot of the women who get surgery then propose this idea of, oh, you should really love yourself and stuff. It's very easy to love yourself after your 16 surgeries in deep. You look amazing, you're airbrushed, you're flawless. Of course you would pitch that idea. There's people out here who are really struggling with identity issues. When they look in the mirror, oh, yeah. they might have stretch marks, scars, 
um, disabilities, anything. There's and I'm not saying that one person's uh, problem is bigger than the other. I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's very easy to say that when you are basically the definition of beauty. Another thing that I was going to say is that there's also this idea that people who get plastic surgery are not happy in themselves or are insecure. And I don't necessarily agree. Yes, mm -hmm. there are loads of people who are like that. And that is a narrative that we are being fed true but there are loads of people who are not insecure and it's simply an enhancement that they want and what's the difference between someone saying you know what i've got double b's which i don't but i would <laughs> I'd feel more comfortable in myself if i had double d's and they were able to go and get that done what's the difference between someone doing that and someone saying you know what i'm not very I'm not a very athletic male and I'd like to be a bit bigger in the biceps. I'm going to go to the gym. They go to the gym and they get the body that they want. Yes, they've worked for it. Two people have gone to go get the body that they want. One was done in the gym. One was surgically enhanced. They've both got the results that they want. Does that mean that the person who got cosmetic surgery was more insecure than the person who went to the gym? No, I don't think so. I think it stems from that taboo that we have of cosmetic surgery. I'm not saying that I would force people. And like I've said, I don't like this generation of glorifying. Yes, get surgery. Because if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure it's like one in three people in Iran get a nose job. And mm. it's yeah. so highly glorified that women walk around with fake band-aids pretending that they've had a nose job just because being a part of the plastic surgery crew is something that they want to be a part of. I'm dead against that. I think everything in moderation... I went to my I went with my friends to Czech Republic for her to go get her boob job. Now I used to be a Mac guy, I used to work on a Mac counter, so loads of people were very into the looks as you can imagine. A couple of girls had gone to this um doctor to go and get their boobs done. I kid you not, I was quivering in my boots. When I went there, it was so sketchy. I felt like I was on the set of Taken. The oh my gosh. doctor looked really sketchy. It was weird. And I said to my friend, I'm not gonna leave you here on your own. Now, when she went there, she's the type of person who's, ah, I'll be alright. That's pretty much her attitude for everything. So they basically stuck the boobs in her, sent her on her way. Now, I used, Mercy. before I did my English degree, honestly, before I did my English degree, I was a student nurse. So I was quite oh. familiar with like, hospital routes and stuff. Yeah, jack of all trades I am. Master I love plan. it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, they weren't really checking her blood pressure. They weren't really mm. checking her respiratory rate. Loads of things that I was thinking, damn. If I was to go and get cosmetic surgery, I would make sure that my life is not at risk. Like Tatiana said, I would want my body to function in the way that it was designed to, and I wouldn't put myself at risk for cosmetic surgery. So there's a lot of pros and cons, but I think that people standing on the bandwagon of, I'm pro, I'm for, I'm against, it's not so black and white. There's more of like a middle ground, and I don't necessarily think that everybody who's insecure is the ones that go for uh, plastic surgery. Yeah, I think what you're saying is so interesting, Mona. Like, I agree. I don't think it's everybody's insecure, but that's why I'm saying I don't even know if people know the reasons why anymore because we've glorified mm -hmm. big breasts, big bumps, small waist. If that mm -hmm. wasn't glorified, mm -hmm. would people still be wanting to go and get large breasts? Would people still be True. wanting? Like, for me, these thoughts are coming from somewhere. They're not originating out of thin air. But mm -hmm. I think in terms of what you said in terms of your friend in the Czech Republic, one thing is just do your research. Like, 100%. Oh, I don't yes. understand. And when you were saying, <laughs> oh, you would do it so there wouldn't be any risk, that's the point with cosmetic, sur cosmetic surgery. There's always risks. True, and that's there true. There is always a risk that something could go wrong. And and I saw, I read this article. I don't know if you guys, guys, you might be too young, but The Hills, do you remember The Hills? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the group, the woman who was on there, <laughs> she was so saying for having 10 surgeries Heidi. in Heidi. one day. Heidi, Heidi had yes. 10 surgeries in one day. She had it when she was 23. And at the time, the article said she was happy, blah, blah. And now that she's like 10 years on, she was like, it was the biggest mistake. She shouldn't have done it. Her body wasn't even properly formally developed. And her husband mm. was just like, people will say that, you know, oh, it's just a quick surgery. It's not, it's not that risky. He was like, no surgery is not risky. And I'm talking about True. any surgery. Any surgery that you have comes with risk and doctors don't actually want to cut in terms of an emergency they will cut when they're like we have to we have to do this but other than that they will try mm -hmm. and de um turn away because you're at risk of infection you're at risk of mm -hmm. all sorts of things and mm -hmm. i don't really understand in my opinion women going to have surgery and one of the biggest motivators is 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 where is it cheaper my thing is yes, we funny. live in a country 
that has some fun. If you're going to get plastic surgery, we have very strict laws around plastic surgery in here, which mm -hmm. means you're going to pay more money. But I'm like, this is your body. Why would you want some person in a country who is cheaper just because for me, I'm like, it doesn't make sense. This is what you're going to have forever, forever, ever, ever, ever. And also with plastic surgery, the results only last so long. And I think that's what we don't see when we see, you know, certain celebrities who might have allegedly had, you know, had Brazilian butt lifts and stuff like mm. that. They are working out every day because I like, you can have the butt lift, but if you're not going to work out to keep it in shape, yeah. if you're not going to eat yeah. right, you are not going to stay with this figure eight. And we try to, people sell it to people as like, you're going to look exactly how you want, but faceless after a while start to sag and you probably have to have it done again. And cheek fillers have to get redone. And like, it's not a quick fix, even if they tell you it's a quick fix. And I just don't think all this information is being shared when young susceptible women or men are going out to have these surgeries. And Sophie, I will definitely agree with you that I think it's sometimes a lot of short fixes. Um, but to pick back up on what Mona was saying with regards to like what's the difference between someone getting their body in the gym and then surgery, I yeah. agree with you on that. I mean, we all know on Twitter there's always um, gym bodies versus BBL body wars that yeah. are always at, at the height of it. And mm -hmm. um, for me, going into the gym and changing, you know, the way that you look in your body and things like that isn't wildly different from going to get surgery. It's just two different avenues. And maybe in the gym you'll yeah. achieve a more... Um, natural look versus an over exaggerated yeah. look when it comes to surgery but for me it's still some sort of body modification and in that remit um i have no issue with anybody enhancing their body but what um but what i've spoken about previously in this episode is for me the people that i was around it wasn't about enhancing it was about fixing some sort of esteem problem so that's for me is mm. what i can't support if you want to okay. enhance your body do as you please like do you know what? i go to the gym not to specifically a heart more to maintain but i go to the gym and all those things so i like i i'm, I'm not opposed to people enhancing their body but i'm mm. with mona on i can't promote something that's what i can't and my issue with plastic surgery is it's no longer yes okay people can say it's an esteem issue now you can also say it's enhancement but now it's become like just another part of the influencer business and it's yeah. really strange to say but yeah. we now obviously i think we've spoken about it previously on the show before that influencers are now being paid by these plastic surgery companies mm -hmm. they get all the free surgery they want and then to influence their, their audience and that for me just is like it, it's just so far-fetched we've gone from clothing to actual physical surgery that you are now selling to people on Instagram. Like, it is yeah. so ridiculous. And I think if you have surgery and somebody asks you, do you have surgery? Like, be honest about it. Yes. Agreed. But I think you shouldn't glorify it because you do mm -hmm. have a certain influence. And I think we're starting to see some influencers like Nella Rose, she came forward and said she's not going to have surgery and it was, you know, what mm -hmm. they said about her. Then we have some influencers, you know, who are still saying hashtag clinic hub. Um, and then we've got other influencers like Molly May. You know, she's been quite candid about her journey to reverse all of her cosmetic enhancements. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was quite... Oh, really? I Molly don't know May if you guys... from Love Island? Yeah, oh, yeah. you haven't seen it? Yeah. She has taken Ooh. out all her face fillers, her lip mm -hmm. fillers. Like, she's taken all the fillers out of her face and she's now taken her fake, her composite bond or whatever she had on her teeth. Yeah. She's taken that off as well. And she's tried to, she's trying to go hair extensionless and things like that because she was just basically saying she started all of this when she was 17 because she was seeing mm. all these girls on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. So she started getting all these, all these procedures. She's now, what, 22 or 23. And she just realized actually she wants more a natural look and that she actually looks okay. And that mm -hmm. for me is where when influencers start with the surgery thing, it just, gets weird for me because we're seeing young girls who actually haven't fully formed. I did not look yeah. like this 10 years ago. Like, mm -hmm. I was saying to my sister the other day, I just grew into my nose. Like, because the whole of my life, mm -hmm. my nose was like my whole face. And now it's just come to the centre because you grow and you change. And as a woman, your body doesn't stop evolving. So the things yeah. you may at 21 go to the surgeon for, you may have naturally got it at 26, but you never knew because you didn't give yourself the opportunity. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I just get tied in the circles of should you, should you not, like... I'm a just I'm just a walking contradiction, but who's it's show me hard. that isn't. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Do you know what it's I mean? a hard one. It is a hard one. One of the things that I think really irks me is the fact that why is it that when somebody gets something, somebody downsizes, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's like protecting the modesty of women. So if a woman was to go and get a boob job, right, which yeah. is an umbrella for amalgamation of things, and they mm -hmm, got mm -hmm. a boob reduction. 
why is that celebrated like oh yeah no it's different because she got a boob reduction and etc etc but somebody who got a boob lift or bigger boobs oh yeah she got a boob lift why is one sexualized but another one because it is modest because she's got smaller boobs it's like oh yeah no that's fine that policing of what women can and can't do what's justified what's okay at the end of the day they're both surgical enhancements and now we're in a generation where there's loads of things you can do without actually going under the knife mm. and i think people have a problem with cosmetic surgery when it's loud and it's in your face and you can detect it when you can't because loads of let's just go off on a tangent loads of women that are glorified they might not look like they've had tweaks done but they could have and the mm. same woman that is being lusted after by their fan base boys girls idolized people idolize them not knowing that they've had surgery so they give them a pat on the back for being so natural but how do you know that what you're basically mm -hmm. saying is you don't have a problem with surgery you don't have a problem with enhancements as long as it's not that detectable so that's why i'm kind of getting people not being real with themselves because they're lying and you're still making people chase after an unobtainable standard of beauty just because you feel like it's not that anna nicole smith boobs in your face does that make sense yeah but i Dude, think i love anna nicole smith, smith. Oh, mona i think we're back so. <laughs> i loved anna it... nicole smith you just reminded me god rest her <laughs> soul i really to, did like um... that your 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 teenage idols are so interesting <laughs> i know do you know what i watched a lot of I didn't watch a lot of Playboy, but you know they had a TV show and then I was kind of into Playboy. I'll just keep it like that. Sorry, Tatiana, go ahead. No problem. No, no, it's fine. Thank you. Now, I'm just going to respond to Mona's question about like breast reduction. Like being someone who is top heavy um, and uh, knowing other people, I think breast reduction is more about back aches and because physically you're not able to do things. So some people have no surgery because they can't breathe correctly. So I think that mm. that is more to do with health opposed to mm. for appearance. Because, you know, people like to have perkier breasts, but for people who are have very large breasts, I think it can cause backache. So it's not for the cosmetic reason, but it's just be able to walk comfortably. Like I don't go jogging or running as much because it's it's it causes a lot of annoyance. It's like it goes like this the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I see other women who can run comfortably and it's not a problem. So I think there are some health uh, reasons why people have surgery and those reasons people uh, are able to celebrate or kind of be okay with opposed to ones where it's more like they would class as vanity so I think there's a difference between different types of surgery if it's reconstructive or it's because of health so I think we have to distinguish what is cosmetic and what is um, more to do with health. I do agree but I also think that it is subjective because I'm also a big titty girl and I would get them reduced <laughs> just so I could wear itty bitty litty committee. I don't, I, I, oh. I'm like, don't you just like want to wear a dress X. that goes into a deep V? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that is a false a narrative. Back, yes, I do. Like yes, I do. No, I'm no. a big breasted what girl no. and I want narrative. to wear something. I want to wear it's the dress false narrative. that just sits It's a false narrative. On no, it is a narrative. The As someone point. who has very small breasts, no, I cannot wear anything and it fits nicely. What? It's a false narrative. That's what we go on, Mona. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're going to that Ace, one. I'm sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> I've got to say, I'm sorry. ASOS is littered with these dresses that are backless with a mm. piece yep. of string. And no, I'm just like, no, there is no bra no, that will no, hold them up if I wear that no, dress. It's a disguise. <laughs> it's a lie. It never looks the same on the model as it does in real life. So even if you had breasts the size of grapes, it, it, no, I'm telling you, I have bought stuff that I'm like, oh, yes. Anissa, just, have yeah, you worn yes, a dress yes, without yes. a bra? All the time. Before I even started this episode, I was wearing a dress without a bra. Do you know what? Yeah, you, you cannot open, speak like, to the three of us. No. You cannot speak is, to the right? three of us then because no, no, that, no, is, that the is a myth. Is, even if you have small breasts, I, it's difficult when I'm wearing things without a bra because either my nipples are going to show or my breasts are going to fall out of the actual garment. And so it's just difficult. Small there's small breast issues, but sorry, but, Lola. Anisa, so do you, do you, you can you? Oh, I was I was just going to ask a question, just a personal question. Anisa, if you if you have to go to Bravissimo or MNS to get bras, <laughs> I think you know it's, it kind of shows you the options because a lot of people who are large breasted can't go and get like really cute bralettes because it no, just but it's I not have made struggled in our too. Size. I have struggled too. This is what I'm talking on the smaller end. I have struggled too. In the last couple of oh. years, I've put on enough weight to get a fair back, right, to get a good um, width of the back size. But I used to have to go to specifically. This is back in the days. Like you had to go 
I had to either go to the sensor or Victoria's Secret because they did the small enough size for me because the smaller size, the smallest sizes that all the shops used to do were 32As. I never had no 32A. I had to hunt for the small bras. There are small issues, people. <laughs> no, it's true. You know it's what? true. I'm, I'm really, I'm really issues. struggling That's to be here for the small breath issues. I'm, I'm not it's gonna lie. Tough. I'm it's tough. Because I had a friend when we were younger. We went to Primark. She would go 25 pounds and come out with like six bras. I'm just like, on Honestly. what? Uh, and I would want to do the same thing. For one <laughs> I just wanted to say, going off Tatiana's point really quickly, is that I definitely do agree that people do do surgery for different reasons, whether it's health or not. But this just goes back to the whole taboo of it and kind of like being able to give women a pat on the back about being modest. I have a friend who actually had a, a breast reduction, which she was able to get on the NHS. I ain't calling no names. She lied to get that for free because the back ache, the this and the that. I don't think it was that bad as she made it out to be. And I remember because she was telling me about, oh, this is how you can do it to judge the system and et cetera, et cetera. I didn't try. But um, my point is, is that the intention of it being like, OK, well, I'm only going to get this done because um, of medical reasons and blah, blah, blah. Is that why is that OK? But if someone else just said, you know what, I just want to get my boobs smaller not because I have a backache for me, for example, just because I want to have them lifted. I want to be able to wear low cleavage tops. I want to be able to have less attention when my boobs are all jiggling out in people's faces. I just think aesthetically it would look better on my body shape if I had smaller boobs. I think whatever the reason is, there shouldn't be judgment on either party, either side who wanted to get that done. And just I to add on to what Mona I says, I... Oh, sorry, just very quickly, just to add on what Mona says, I think there shouldn't be judgment for anybody that wants to get any enhancement. Obviously, I'm not for it and I won't support it, but I'm not going to judge you if you do it because who mm -hmm. is natural anyway? Like, we, there's there's a part of everyone that is fake. Like, let's be honest, fake hair, mm -hmm. fake nails, fake true, lashes, true. fake everything. Like, nobody is 100% natural as they came out of the womb. Like, we all mm -hmm. do our own level of enhancement. So, you, it's just a contradiction if, if you if you judge someone for their enhancements. Sorry, Sophie. Yeah. And I was going to say, like, I just want to make it clear. I love my my reasonably very well-sized breasts. Just to that. <laughs> but there are, there are some tops that I genuinely get jealous over that I really wish I could wear. But I was going to say, what in terms of what Mona said, I think it is... It made me think. I really think it is linked to misogyny. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. women want to own their... And I hate this term. But when women want to own their sexuality and be like, I want to look sexier, I want to look like this, that is something that we don't really, we don't really promote in general. When a woman mm -hmm. wants to come in wearing red lipstick or like her hair snatched and her nails, like sometimes we men, not men, patriarchal society has really made that, that, that woman is, you know, you know, you should be, you know, demure and demure means, you know, not putting yourself out there. So I think some of it is linked to misogyny, but I think, people should just really think long and hard about why they're doing it and make sure they're mm. doing it for the right reasons. And I just still think that's really difficult in a society where there is um, fat bias, ageism, and mm. perfection perfectionism is thrown down our throats. It's very difficult mm -hmm. for women to even know what it is that they want to look like without all the images that are coming towards us. Wow, it was amazing listening to all of you. Uh, for myself, I think, you know, own your own your body and just be happy with who you are. And if you want to change things, go for it. But I would like to thank everyone for watching and listening to Ethnically Speaking. Let's keep this conversation going. Have you had or would you ever get plastic surgery? Do you think it's worth the risk? Let us know in the comments down below. For a summary of everything we spoke about today, head over to unitedmeldinggroup.com forward slash ESO57. There's a link in the description below. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Ethnically speaking, we'll be back on Friday, but until then, wash your hands, wear a mask, keep your distance and stay safe.